hi everyone so like I said in the video before I'm gonna be talking to you about what happened after my last update I think I was like 20 weeks pregnant what happened was I started to feel a lot of pain on my lower back um, I went to the doctor and I told them that I was having um, lower back pain he thought that um, maybe it was just because I wasn't sleeping good or the things that I was doing with my other girls um, he said it's okay um, but it's, if by the next appointment I think I was I was going to be 24 weeks it's still hurting then we'll check it out well what happened was I kept having the back pain um, I was having a, a lot of night sweats I started feeling contractions and then he when I went back to my doctor I was going for the glucose test and I went first to the lab they drew my blood I took the drink uh, during the hour wait long I went back to see my doctor because in the office that I was going um, they have labs they had uh, the doctors and they did most of the work and evaluation in the same place so I went he checked me, he said, okay, it's about an hour, go take your blood again and then come back. I went, I did that. But once I got back again to my doctor, I said, I need to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and I said, I called the nurse and I said, I'm spotting. It was very little, but I was spotting. And then he said, well, you have to go to the hospital and we need to check you. So I call my family, I make arrangement to somebody to pick up my girls at school so I can go with my mom or my grandmother to the hospital and for them to make a bag for me just in case. So when I went to the hospital, they were already expecting me. A nice doctor, Dr. Alison Amore, was there waiting for me. They did everything, they put me the monitor, they did some swab um, to see if I was at risk to having premature labor. Well, it came back positive and I was having contractions already. Since it's my fourth, it was my fourth baby and all of the other ones were premature, they got scared and they put me on bed rest so that enough was hard and to know that you have this baby inside of you and and your body is reacting in a way that it like rejecting the baby it makes me feel bad it made me feel bad i was thank god my mom moved with me and she was with me for like three months then she went and find her own place um, because she came down from Georgia to be with me because of my pregnancy so she find she found her own apartment and then my grandmother came to live with me because I couldn't be alone I didn't follow instructions I couldn't be in bed rest for the next four months five months because I had three other girls my husband was working I needed to take care of my girls take them to school do homework so I tried my best to be out of my feet but I couldn't so that made things a little more um, difficult because I needed to take some shots they said well if you cannot be on bed rest we have to help your body maintain the baby inside of you for as long as we can so they started giving me every Friday shots of McKenna that's like progesterone um, hormones into my body 
I needed to see the specialist which was the Dr. Amore. They changed me from my regular OB for a high risk uh, OB doctor. Thank God I didn't need to go to a different office because she came to my office or to the office that I was going already. And um, she was there every Friday examining me, listening to my baby, um, and taking the shots, doing blood, blood tests. They, when I was in the hospital, they gave me two steroid, steroid shots just in case the baby day came early. Um, so beside that, when uh, I did the one hour glucose test, it came back as I was with my sugar was high so they said hmm you may have gestational diabetes we're gonna do the three hours but the thing is that I got the steroid shots they did the three hours so my levels came even more higher because the steroids change all that things it, it messed up the test so I waited for like two weeks three weeks and they did the test and thank God my sugar came back all right but when I was by this time I was already 28 to 30 weeks pregnant um, they said nothing you cannot do anything because I started to lose my mucus block and my contractions were getting stronger and stronger and more regular um, they say that happens with the more babies you have, the, the body knows what it's doing and you can start having contractions a little longer but or earlier. But by this time, I was 34 weeks, still taking the, the shots, the McKenna shots. I was in a lot of pain, a lot, a lot, a lot of pain to the point that I could not sit, I could not stand, I could not lay it on my back or on my side. My back was killing me. I went again to the emergency room. They left me overnight. They gave me medicine to stop the contractions. It wasn't working. They told me, well, we had to do a BPP, a biophysical profile, um, sonogram ultrasound so I went down you're supposed to get an 8 out of 8 my baby got a 4 because she wasn't showing movement and she wasn't showing breathing movement like she could breathe, breathe on her own so that even scared me more they made me sign some papers to do a six session because they told me they were going to leave me another 24 hours in the hospital. By this time it was already 24 hours. So my stay will be 48. Um, they were going to do another test, uh, another BPP ultrasound at 8 in the morning. And if the baby got a 4 out of 8 again, even a 6, they were going to do an emergency C-section. And the baby was going to be in the NICU. So I spent the whole night alone crying and thinking how can my body be rejecting my baby? How can my body be doing this to me? I want my baby. I want my baby so much. Thank God in the morning she got an 8 out of 8. So I called my mom and I said, well, hey, can you pick me up? She was working. So my aunt, her sister came to pick me up. And as soon as I got home, I said, hey, I need help because... I just can't do this alone. I need help. I need to wait a couple of more weeks. I went that Friday again to my doctor and she said, look, if you make, um, if you can hold the baby inside and make it to 36, 37 weeks, I'm not going to hold you no more. If you make it to that week, and you want to have the baby, then you're free to have the baby. Uh, we're not gonna make it. So what happened? I got to 36 weeks and four days, 
no more McKenna shots. They give me the, the, the freedom to have the baby. They check me. I was not dilated. I wasn't effaced. Nothing. It's like my body decided, well, you guys made me wait. Now you have to wait for me to decide that I want to keep this baby out. Well, 37 weeks came. Nothing. 38 weeks came. Nothing. I was feeling good. By this time, I already was out of bed rest. I was walking a lot. I was dancing. I was doing the deed. Um, I ate food. Nothing. 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 No contractions. No nothing. When I went for my 38 and 4 weeks appointment. 4 days, sorry. 38 weeks and 4 days. I was erect. I started crying in the office and I said, I feel like my labor has been stalled. I just want this baby out. I don't want to keep waiting. I'm having contractions and then for three hours and then they go away. And I started crying and I said, I want the baby out, out, out. Well, my doctor said that at 39 weeks, we can do labor because over here in Florida, that's when they allowed the doctor to induce labor. So I said, okay, just make the appointment, go call the hospital and, and tell them that I'm going um, on Tuesday the 28th uh, to the hospital, the Tuesday the 28th of October to the hospital to get admitted so we can have the baby. And she said, okay, 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 so wait a second. Well, that's what happened. Um, she came back and she said, yes, we have all the papers. Um, the receptionist is going to give you the papers that you need to sign and your copy. So at 8 o'clock at night on the 28th of October, you go through the emergency room. Says you're going to labor and delivery. They're expecting you. Um, the day before of the 28th, the hospital is going to call you and they're going to tell you what you need to do. Um, and the date of the hospitalization, the day that you're going to go in, they're going to call you and they're going to say, okay, be here between 7, 7.30. The 28th came. I was ready. My husband did her arrangement, his arrangement. My mother did hers. Everyone knew who was going to take um, the baby, care of the baby and the hospital and, and taking them into school and all that. They call me. I think it was 3 o'clock in the evening. That they had a lot of babies coming. A lot of pregnant women in the hospital. And since I was in induced labor, I could not go in. That was devastated i was like no why can you do this no i want to have my baby how can you give my room to another person and and then i started crying and my mom said hey lisa let's just go out and and look for new things for the baby for you so you can feel good let's comb my hair let's wash our hair let's go to the beauty salon let's do something well i couldn't uh, I, we went out, we went to the mall, walking around, I was hysterical that she bought me ice cream and I could not eat it because I was so pissed. I called the hospital again and I said, listen, I have three other girls, my husband make arrangement at work, my mom did, the babysitter did, I need to have the baby. I just cannot expect you to call me whenever you want to have the baby. Why they told me, can you come at midnight? And I said, yes, of course. So that's what happened. I went at midnight to the hospital. When the, the guard saw me, he said, I guess you are ready to have the baby. She, he called a nurse with a wheelchair. They took me to labor and delivery. My doctor was not there. There was another doctor on schedule. Um, That was like the cherry on the top that made me lose it 
I mean, I started crying like crazy, like a crazy hormonal person on the labor and delivery area. Um, the doctor said, well, we cannot give you Pitocin yet because of your heart condition. We have to put IV, um, antibiotic through your IV and we have to do another um, ultrasound. And I said, okay, fine. So they did that. The doctor came and checked me. I was already on a three three centimeters, 75% of face. In my last appointment, the 38 weeks and four days, I was in barely a one and not even 40% of face. So in three days, I went from one to a three and from a 40 to a 75% of face, minus one station. That's the position of the head. Um, for the person that don't know, if you're watching this video, you probably know all those numbers. So I went down, they did an ultrasound, the baby was fine, she was head down and she was doing everything right. By seven o'clock in the morning, um, my daughter came in and she said, well, thank you for waiting. I'm sorry I wasn't here yesterday, but I had a family emergency and I tried to figure everything out and I, yada, 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 yada. And then I said, I was gonna get mad if you were not here. Made me wait this long for not to be here and another doctor take care of my baby, that's not fine. But it was the emotion that I was feeling that I, I acted crazy. She said, well, you're uh, in a five right now. So between one o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock with no Pitocin, no medicine whatsoever, I went from a three, the first checkup, to a five centimeter between six hours with no help. Um, and I was already 85% of face, still minus one station. The doctor says, since I'm here, I'm gonna start you on a one drop of Pitocin to help you. And she said, are you sure you don't want no medicine? I said, no, no medicine, because I know that when you come back and check me, I'll still be on a five. I don't break water by myself. You have to break me. And she says, okay. She came back at 9.45 in the morning. And she said, okay, I'm gonna break your water, um, your membranes. She broke it. I had very little water. Uh, I had, by this time, uh, there was no mucus plug. I know that's TMI, but it's true because I already lost it in the weeks before. Um, and I said, well, don't go too far because after you break my water, I'll go quickly. So what happened? <laughs> what happened was my husband came from dropping the girls to school. Here. Here. Thank you, mommy. You're welcome. Sorry, that was my third daughter wanted a pacifier for the baby. Um, so where were I? Where was I? Oh yeah. Um, my my husband came. It was ten o'clock in the morning already. I was having very intense contraction. He came by um, with a cup of coffee, and I couldn't eat anything. So I said, I'm going to get you later. He said, the babies, my, my daughter said, um, hope you're fine. We're going to see you soon. We love you. So that made me cry even more. My grandmother came with my husband. And then like five minutes later, it was 10, 5, 10, 10 in the morning. My sister-in-law came. Um, I started to feel very heavy 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 contractions and i started saying oh god this is getting worse must i hope the doctor is closed because i know within the hour i'm gonna be pushing that's what happened it was 11 o'clock in the morning and i felt that pressure and i told my husband you better get out and he said why and i said just get out the baby's coming <laughs> he went out i called the nurse 
because I couldn't let my mom call the nurse. I needed to be in control. So I, we called the nurse and um, the nurse says, what happened? And I said, I feel pressure. You better go get the doctor because I know the baby's coming. And she said, well, I'm going to check you. I was on a nine centimeter. Um, and it hasn't been like an hour and 15 minutes since I was in five. I was nine centimeters, 100% effaced, and minus two stations. So the baby was there. Um, she called the doctor. The doctor, I think it was having breakfast or something. And there was a lot of people, a lot of movement. By this time, the pain was so intense because uh, I tear a muscle on my left leg the muscle that is on the inside of the thigh close to that area when the baby came comes out um so i was in a lot of pain um thank god that the nurse that was there it was the nurse that always was there for me when i was hospitalized or doing the ultrasound the nsds the vpp she was always there so she knew um, my case really good they called the doctor by the time the doctor came it was 11:30. Um, I said I need to push I need to push and she said don't don't push don't push yet we haven't finished prepping the area and I said I'm sorry I need pushing I mean I was pushing and I couldn't push at the same time because the pain on my leg was so unbearable it was more intense than the contraction itself sorry my baby interrupted me again um like i was saying the pressure of the baby coming down it was even worse than the contractions so my um sister-in-law not noticed that i was like fainting i couldn't breathe um she told um, the nurse she needs oxy oxygen 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 sorry i needed oxygen because i was fainting and then my mom was there lisa push 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 um my mom has never seen any of my girls being born um or any of my nephews and um nieces being born so this is the first baby that she's been um there my grandmother saw my third baby being born um, my sister-in-law has never seen a, a birth so everyone was excited and then I had these nurses there um, that they were watching a live birth because they were doing their practices so I had a lot of people there and I really didn't care um, by this time the baby's head was like stuck it couldn't go out so the baby was getting purple and my mom said, Lisa, you need to push right now. And even the doctor said, push, you can do it, push. So I pushed the baby and within three pushes, she was out. She was born at 11.55 in the morning. She was beautiful. As soon as she came out and they put, it, put, it, uh, put my baby girl on my skin, she 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 just was beautiful i fell in love with her instantly she had these amazing blue eyes she was very white they took her away um they told me she weighed 7 11. she was 19 and a half inches long and um what else yeah 7 11 19 and a half inches long they gave it back to me we did skin to skin and she nursed instantly she she was a pro nursing and then my doctor said um, congratulations I'll see you later they cleaned me up they dropped they took me to the recovery room um, she was a little jaundice and since I had um, group B strep the, the, the test they do to see if you have bacteria down there I, I was positive so they couldn't let me go they discharged me the day after but I didn't want to go I wanted to stay in the hospital with my baby so I got out on Halloween the 31st and yeah 
that was it she was beautiful she nursed like a pro before i left the hospital my milk came in already she was a trooper sleeping never had a problem now we have the problem because she's teething and she doesn't sleep as well but she's really been a very good baby she's nine months already and i love her and you're gonna see more videos on this channel on my mommy channel i'm gonna keep you updated with her and with me um so yeah that's my birth story that's what happened with my pregnancy and i got um a tubal so i'm not gonna have uh, more babies four is enough and four girls oh my so yeah thank you for watching i hope you are interested still in more mommy videos i have a beauty channel i'm gonna link it in the description box below so you can go see it over there i do a lot of mommy's makeup um i'm sorry for the um i know i i did it a lot hope you like it <laughs> hope you enjoy my birth story uh after maybe in a week i will do another update on how postpartum has been going with me thank you for watching bye